Thank you very much, Weaver Vale. This is the 86th rally I've addressed in this election campaign. And after that, we're going to Colwyn Bay, and then we're heading south, and we end up tonight in my constituency in London. We started at 8 o'clock this morning in Glasgow. And yesterday, we showed Labour covering the whole country. We had beam rallies to six places all over Britain. This campaign is enthusiastic, strong, growing, and very confident. I've got a present here for Mike Amesbury. Quite simple, Mike, no pressure. Win for all of us tomorrow. All the best. You'll see, you'll see the van that's parked behind me, and you know what this election is about. Never before has there been a clearer choice in British politics about which way we go. The re-election of a Tory government tomorrow will mean five more years of cuts to our NHS, five more years of increased waiting lists and waiting times, five more years of more and more people waiting for social care, five more years of more and more people not getting the mental health that they support. Five more years of austerity and cuts to the vast majority of the people of this country. Our National Health Service, I think, is the most precious and civilised thing that we have in this country. Health care free at the point of use for everybody. Something very special about that. Under these Tories, it's been underfunded, it's been privatised, the staff are on a pay freeze and in reality 14% pay cut over the past seven years. You know the reality of it, I know the reality of it. So a Labour government on day one will suspend the sustainability and transformation plans, look at it all again to ensure there are A&E departments covering the whole country. We will properly fund our National Health Service. We will properly fund our social care system and set up a national care service so that you're treated if you get cancer in a hospital, you'll just as well be treated if you have dementia. At the moment, you'll get cancer free, but not dementia free. It's all part of our belief in a caring society. I also feel strongly about the mental health crisis facing this country. Too many people, particularly young people, suffer alone, they suffer stigma, and they suffer abuse. We want to properly fund this, uh, mental health services, but also all of us together can do something about it. We can do something about it by supporting each other, ending the jokes, ending the stigma, ending the isolation. We can all be in a bad place. Communities bring people together. But this election is also about the future of our young people. There is a change in the funding formula in our schools. Head teachers are being told, if you can't afford to pay your teachers, can't afford to sustain your school, then either tough or go and collect some money from the parents. Well, sorry, I want to live in a society where, yes, we all pay our taxes. We pay our taxes that our children can be properly educated in our schools. And so, starting at the youngest age, we will bring in free preschool places for all two to four year olds, irrespective of parental income or background. So those children get to grow up together. Their first experience is doing things together, growing together. That's strong. And then in the primary schools, two big things I'm very keen on doing. The Tories brought in some limited numbers of free school meals in the country. They've now decided to take that away and as you know they're very challenged where maths is concerned. So we, um, we did some sums on their offer of school breakfast and it turns out to be just shy of seven pence per day per child. I don't quite know what the exact price of Rice Krispies is today but I think you could manage about an egg cup full of Rice Krispies with that sort of money. It's a joke, it's an insult, quite frankly. Hungry children don't learn. Hungry children can't concentrate. Hungry children 
don't achieve in primary, and that goes all the way through the years. And so I am determined, and it will cost, I know, but I'm determined to do it, that we will bring in free school meals for every child in every primary school across the whole country, and they will eat that together. But it, education is about schools, it is about learning, it is about subjects, but it's also about our children unlocking their imagination. There is poetry in every child, there's art in every child, there's music in every child. And so we will bring in a pupil arts premium so that every child can get to learn a musical instrument while they're in school. And I see that as part of the kind of society and community we want. And as they go through the school years, many other things are also very important. But if you take away, as the Tories have done, the educational maintenance allowance, take away the grant, the maintenance grant for those going on to university, raise university fees up to 9,000 a year, introduce college fees, introduce fees for adult education. What happens? Well, you know what happens. Fewer students from middle income or poor families go to university, go to college, or achieve what they want to in life. Two things happen then. They lose out because they're not following the career they wanted. They're not learning the trade or profession they wanted to do. They lose out and we lose out because we don't get that nurse, that engineer, that doctor, that skilled person who would contribute to all of our society. And so I am very keen, very keen that we will instead invest in our young people. And so we've costed it and it does cost and it is expensive, but I think it's absolutely the right thing to do. We will end university fees altogether and reintroduce the maintenance grant because it cannot be right, it cannot be right that uh, so many of our young people leave university with debts of 40 or 50,000 pounds around their neck merely because they wanted to get educated. I think we've got to invest in our future for all of us. And so it is about, this election is about the kind of society and world we want to live in. We want an economy that works for all. I don't want an economy where six million people are earning less than the living wage, where a million are on zero hours contracts. I want instead a real living wage, £10 an hour by 2020. I want, I want an end to the indignity of zero hours contract, where in the stress you wake up, you wake up every morning wondering if you've got work that day. That's not right. And so we'll be changing quite a lot on employment law. But we'll also be investing in our economy for the future. And so we'll be establishing a national investment bank. That national investment bank will invest over 10 years, 500 billion pounds across the whole of the UK, regionally based, so that all the transport and infrastructure investment doesn't just go to London and the South East, it goes to every part of the country. And We'll be investing, yes, in the infrastructure that I talked about, but also about new technology, sustainable industry jobs. Because as a country, we have to improve our manufacturing capacity. It is half that of Germany and productivity is much lower. We have to do better and provide good quality, skilled jobs for the young people of the future. Those things to me are very, very important. And people say to me, well, this manifesto, for the many, not the few, is, um, they say, well, it's going to cost a lot of money. Yes, it is. I know that. But, and we're very clear about this, we have fully costed it. 95%, 95% of the population will pay no more in tax, no more in national insurance, no more in VAT. Taxation for corporations will go up for the big ones. We will be, at the same time, supporting small businesses and there will be some tax rises for those on very large incomes. I think that is the right thing to do because we've had seven years of austerity, seven years in which the banking crisis of 2008-2009 has been paid for by the low wages in the public sector, by unemployment, by insufficient housing, by public services being cut, 
all over the country. This generation is being damaged by the austerity created by the banking crisis. Our manifesto offers something very, very different for, for the future. Our manifesto offers opportunity for the whole country, offers a change in our attitudes. We are, we are putting to the British people this programme because we believe very strongly in it. And tomorrow we've got the chance to vote for it and elect Labour MPs like Mike and many others to carry it through. And when we carry it through, we want to be measured by the numbers of people that are no longer homeless, the numbers of children that are no longer poor, the number of people that are no longer living in poor quality, overcrowded housing, the better chances everybody has got. And by our environmental sustainability, by the way in which we approach the whole of society. And I'm very, very excited by the opportunities offered by it. And so, the election of a Labour government tomorrow will be the election of Labour MPs to make sure that's carried out, that's true. But do you know what? Over the seven weeks of this campaign, a lot has changed. A lot has changed because the Tory party thought it was going to be a walk in the park. They just thought, we're in a lovely park today, we enjoy your walk. They just thought, a walk in the park. What have they got to offer? We've got something very important to offer here. The difference. The difference is this. A Tory government will continue with all the policies they're doing at the present time, continue with the indignity of the way they treat those with disabilities, the way in which they treat those that are hardest up in our society, the way they walk by on the other side when people are in desperate need. We offer something very different. If you look around yourself in this crowd here today, this fantastic crowd here today, look at all of us. We're young, we're old, we're black, we're white, we're men, we're women, we're gay, we're straight, we have problems, we have ease in life, we have lots of different things. But do you know what? Do you know what? Do you know what unites us together is a belief, a common belief, in humanity, a common belief in what we can achieve together. Either you go down the arid road of Tory cuts, Tory closures, Tory privatisation, Tory inequality, or you take the other road. Those bold and brave people that led our party in the desperate days after the Second World War had that vision of a National Health Service, of an inclusive society. This Labour Party in the 21st century has that vision, that vision that you share the wealth, you share the ability, you contribute to your society and your community, and you leave no one, no community, and no place behind. I'm, I'm very proud of the positive campaign we have fought all over the country. I'm very proud of the positive messages we put forward. And to those young folk on top of that rock, please be careful, please do not fall. Because <laughs> I will get the blame if you do. <laughs> and we have refrained from personal abuse because I do not believe that gets us anywhere. <laughs> I understand because people, my neighbours tell me that some people have said some very unkind things about me. I forgive them all. I forgive them all and I ask all of you in the few hours that remain in the few hours that I think that's support in the few hours that remain until the polls open tomorrow morning think very hard talk to your friends talk to your neighbors talk to everyone in the community of the choice before us tomorrow to me it's a choice of the kind of world kind of country we want to live in it's a choice of this or cuts, closure and privatisation. It's a choice, quite simply, of hope or fear. Can I ask you all to work hard today to get people to vote tomorrow so that we elect that government that can work for the good of all of us. Thank you very much. We will. Thank you.